bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. You know, I always like to uh, go back into my catalog of uh, articles and, you know, revisit them. You know, th there's oftentimes when you blog about a lot of stuff that when a particular topic comes up and makes the news, it's like, OK, let me uh, revisit a, a piece that I did some years ago. Now, this piece that I want to discuss today is actually from February of 2012, so over 10 years ago, almost 11 now. But it was about a year after uh, Whitney Houston, you know, pop superstar, had passed away. Um, you know, it's been a, there was a lot of speculation, I remember, after her death about what the real cause of her death was. And, you know, and I looked at all the circumstances, you know, surrounding her death. I just, I chalked that up as another celebrity takedown. That's, that's how I looked at it, you know. Um, if you go back and just look at the facts, look at all the, <laughs> just the, the, uh, the numerology that was involved in that or everything that was just, I mean, almost everything about it was just like, psh. I mean, of course, the press is going to go on TV and say, hey, you know, she, she was a drug addict, Whitney Houston, you know, it's a shame, but, you know, this is her own fault or something like that, you know, however the media was talking about it. But, you know, all of the signs that I saw there and when you consider the, the deaths of so many other entertainers, black and white, and you see some of the same signs. I mean, it's like, OK, <laughs> you come to your own conclusion, but, you know, you dig enough into Whitney Houston's story and the, and the facts that surround her death. And it's like, OK, you know, she died. And then within, I don't know what, an hour or so, they had already, you know, spiked the, the price of her records, her, her CDs or whatever. You know, I mean, this shouldn't come as a surprise at all because there's too many been there's been too many artists over the years who have talked about, you know, uh, how you know your life is on the line dealing with something you know like as as evil as the music industry. I mean, you know, the, the secret is really out. I mean, if people are in denial about that, you know, they can just remain in denial. But there's been too many artists who have talked about this over the years. I mean, you go back over, just look at some of the stuff that people have said, because these videos stay up on YouTube unless they <laughs> go into a certain topic that people don't really want to get into. Um, but I'm just saying, when you look at some of the, it, there was a while, I don't know if it was around sometime between 2007 and maybe 2017, it just seemed like there was this like, celebrity after one after another that were just dying. It's like, okay, all of these, you know, suspicious circumstances, then you compare it to some of the, the artists from the past. You know, I, I remember for years knowing about the, the, the story of how Jimi Hendrix supposedly died. Well, I don't mean supposed, I mean, obviously he died, but I mean the circumstances surrounding his death. Again, there was the story that the media put out, but then years later, the, the, the story, the real story of how Jimi Hendrix died came out. You know, then you start looking at other stories, you, the, the Elvis story. What really happened to Elvis? What really happened to Prince? What really happened to Michael Jackson? What happened to Kurt Cobain, Amy, Amy Winehouse? And the, the list just goes on and on. I mean, if you want to, you know, feel free, believe whatever you want to believe. But I'm just saying they've left too many clues out here for people to continue to believe what the press actually tells us. But <laughs> obviously, this is not the topic at hand that I want to cover. But since I was talking about Whitney Houston, you see how I kind of went down that road. Um, so the reason why I'm talking about Whitney Houston today is because of a piece that I saw earlier today. It's like, wow, you, you know, the, the thing about music and entertainment, television, movies, whatever it is, you know, it's just like, um, you know, headline making news events. You can always remember where you were, what you were doing when you heard that such and such happened or such and such died or whatever, you know exactly where you were when you heard this for the first time, you know. Um, the same is true for me uh, when we talk about Whitney Houston. I, I just remember talking to a friend of mine on the phone and we were just talking about it like, wow. And, you know, he, it, 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 I've said this before that oftentimes when a big news story hit, hits you, it's like you, your frame of thinking just, just freezes for a minute because you're kind of caught up in the moment. But I was talking to one of my friends on the phone and he was just like, man, Mark, come on, dude, you know what's up. They killed her. 
you know, <laughs> and within, you know, a couple of weeks of looking into the story, I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, what people would would label believing that Whitney Houston was killed as a conspiracy theory. But then you have Shaka Khan, who was on CNN, like, I think within a week of her death on TV, talking about like, look, her manager once told her that, hey, you're more valuable to me dead than alive. So, <laughs> I mean, do your own research, come to your own conclusion. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear to me. But um, the reason why I wanted to talk about Whitney Houston today, and it's like, wow, I look back and I say, her movie debut, uh, The Bodyguard, came out 30 years ago, uh, November 25th. So I came across this piece today. I mean, just going back again, I remember I saw I saw The Bodyguard. I was absolutely just blown away. I think most of us were blown away with Whitney Houston's uh her vocal prowess with so many of the songs on that album that just became iconic, you know, songs, you know, that will stand the test of time. And it's just hard to believe. Wow. That was 30 years ago. I remember where I was living at that time. I remember who I was seeing, you know, I, I just remember that time in the early nineties, what was going on in music, what was going on in sports. But so Kevin Costner, the star of the film actually says something pretty intriguing. Not surprising, just intriguing. Like, okay, you know, and this is why I can't totally go with a left leftist rhetoric or, you know, conservative rhetoric on it because the truth lies, I believe, somewhere in the middle. You know, people in the conservative crowd will say, you know, racism is not a major problem in this country, you know, or Brazil for that, for that matter. Then you've got people on the left who will say that everything is racism. And it's like, I believe the truth is somewhere in the middle there. But I came across this article. I think I saw it. I just either I saw it yesterday or I saw it today where it says the bodyguard at 30. Kevin Costner says there were warnings against casting Whitney Houston because she was black. Then, it, you know, it goes into the fact that Whitney Houston's star had been on the decline for a number of years. She was trying to get back on track. Um, I remember and I said this in one of my articles uh, that I remember like late 80s, early 90s. You know, African-Americans had kind of looked at Whitney Houston like, you know, she's the pop diva superstar, but she's never going to really get into soul music. And so <clears throat> one particular year, somewhere between 89 and 91, I want to say she appeared on the Soul Train Music Awards and she got booed because people were looking at her like. You don't even belong here with the type of music that you're singing. Right. Um, so I think she was in a period where she was trying to reconstruct her career at that point. I think it was a little bit before the bodyguard where she hired LA and Babyface to, you know, I don't know, black in her music. And I don't know, you know, <laughs> when I look at LA and Babyface and, and their production standards, I mean, you know, they were obviously great producers, but I'm saying their music was very, you know, like pasteurized, you know, it wasn't like, you know, LA and Babyface had a very much of a music formula. If you listen to their stuff, you know, okay, more power to them. They earned a lot of money. They figured out what the pop music market wanted and they gave it to them, you know, but it just got to a certain point where, <laughs> Like, man, can we make some more music that's a little bit more challenging, that's, you know, a little bit more daring? But, you know, people have their 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 goals in music. I'm here to sell 100 million records or whatever it might be. But let me try to stay on point here because I, you know, me, <laughs> I'll just keep going. A couple of more things that uh, Kevin Costner said. Everybody alerted me to the fact that she was black, which I knew. It might have been easier two years earlier at her peak. But after that movie, she became, I think, one of the biggest stars in the world. And that's intriguing because... If they would have failed to cast Whitney Houston in that film, you know, maybe we would have never heard her remake of the Dolly Parton hit, I Will Always Love You. Um, I actually like the Dolly Parton's version also. It's, you know, it's different, obviously, has more of a country feel to it. Um, but Costner, went on, he went further. He says, you know, if you're going to play in a baseball movie, you know, it's like it's like faking being a good baseball player. When you see one of our world class actresses faking being a great singer, it doesn't seem right. So I really felt that we could we should go for a true singer. It didn't matter if she was black or white. The fact that she was black, that didn't bother me. So Kevin Costner is basically telling us, it's like, look, it's, okay, Whitney Houston's star might have been on the decline, but she was still a hit maker at that time. But yet there was talk like, don't put her in a movie specifically because she was black. Okay, so I thought we were supposed to be post-racial at this point. <laughs> well, okay, we're saying now, People will say we're post-racial or whatever, but here it is in the beginning of the 90s. And you didn't want to, they didn't want to cast one of the biggest pop stars of all time in a movie because she was black. I mean, what does that say about race relations? You know, what do 
<laughs> what, what would the conservatives say about that? You know, this is Kevin Costner. Obviously, he would know as he was the, the main star of that film. So how I want to tie this in is because, like I said, I did an article about uh, the meaning of Whitney Houston and the obstruction of a black female pop superstar in Brazil. Now, where I'm going with this is when you look at the Brazilian music industry and I've, I've you know, I've, there's a couple pieces, you know, on the blog to talk about Brazil's music industry. It's like. Black people are supposed to sing certain types of music, according to the Brazilian elites. I always say that Brazil's national music, the music that's most associated with Brazil, which is called samba, it has a historical cultural history equal to the blues or jazz in the United States, you know? But the problem with that is when black women are singers in Brazil, the music industry will automatically try to push that person directly into the world of samba. And there's nothing wrong with being a samba singer. It's just that um, it tends to be sometimes kind of folkloric. It's not, it's, it's a music that's historical, you know, like, if you think about how people see blues, like people love to hear the blues, but it's kind of like passe. It's like, you know, old folks music, right? Now, I'm not saying, you know, Samba in some ways, I can't really make that comparison because it's still very much modern. People still record a lot of Samba music. It's still part of the culture. But in the same way, if you want to sell a lot of records, it's not necessarily Samba that you want to sing because Brazil has advanced and moving on, moved on to other styles of, of music also. You know, when Brazil started experimenting with rock and roll in the 1950s and 60s, you know, the uh, the cultural critics at the time rejected it because they felt like it was American imperialism. They felt like it was, you know, British imperialism. Like, why are you replacing our beautiful music with, you know, outside influences? But today, even though people will still sing samba, if you want to sell a lot of records, one of the, the most popular music forms in Brazil for a number of years has, has been uh, Sertanejo. It's kind of like a Brazilian style of type of, you know, country type music maybe. Um, but I have to say that there's been a number of uh, Black women singers who've been able to raise, you know, rise in the ranks of pop music in Brazil. But they're still not what I would call just superstars on the level of Whitney Houston. So... The reason why I'm talking about Whitney Houston is because there's been a number of Black Brazilian singers who told their story in this book talking about how Brazil doesn't want to see a Black Brazilian woman be a pop superstar. So a lot of these artists will end up going overseas to record their music because the Brazilian music industry wants to typecast them just in the samba category. Um, some of these women are more known outside of Brazil than they are in their own country. Um, there have been a number of singers over the years who have prone uh, have improved they have proven how well they sing but it just it, i don't see you know first of all brazil being not not being a country that english is the first language they're already going to be at a disadvantage by singing in portuguese but then you have to deal with this 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 idea in the music industry that black woman means samba and when the black woman artist says look i can sing other things besides samba this is what I want to sing. And it gets to the point where, okay, I'm not going to get anywhere in Brazil's music industry. I need to pursue my musical uh, goals, you know, in other countries. And a lot of people have done that. But I'm going to get more into that. But let me just introduce uh, the connection with Whitney Houston and how I saw this dynamic working, playing out. Well, let me say this. Before I even move into uh the influence of Whitney Houston and the importance of Whitney Houston. I mean, people can say that they don't necessarily like Whitney Houston's music because she's a black woman who had strong gospel background overtones in her voice, but she chose to sing music that was associated with, you know, pop singers, you know, white pop singers. Um, but being that she was such a huge success, obviously she was going to be uh, a major influence on women in Brazil who wanted to be singers, for example. Hailed as the Brazilian Whitney Houston singer Talita Pertuzzi, thrills audiences with a four-show salute to the legend in Sao Paulo and Rio. But will Brazil ever promote a Black female singer to superstar status? Uh, so this was a flyer of the show, the series of shows that this young lady was doing. Yeah, obviously she was vocally gifted. 
she did a whole, you know, she was doing her salute to Whitney Houston. So obviously she had the vocal, the vocals to be able to cover that, to uh, carry that out. But it was just the point of, I, I predicted this in this actual story. I'm like, this was 2016. I says, you know, time will tell. Uh, but having a black woman singing pop standards and, you know, becoming one of the top singers in the country, I just, seeing how the music, the Brazilian music industry deals with black women, I didn't see it happening. And I have yet to hear where this woman is today. Uh, if she is singing, if she's, I don't know what she's doing. I haven't heard. I have to look into this. Because obviously, she hasn't become a big star, you know, it, as that was just something that I predicted. Unfortunately, that's how the Brazilian music industry gets down. Then we have uh, Vanessa Jackson, name is, but, you know, she covered Whitney Houston's Didn't We Almost Have It All. You know, feel free to check it out on YouTube. Hopefully, it's still up. Then you have this young guy right here. Um, what's the, I forget his name. I can find that out. But he was uh, he was a participant on the uh, the the talent show, you know, uh, Brazil Voice, you know, the Voice, the Kids Edition, and he blew people away with 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 his music, you know, with his voice. They 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 nicknamed they nicknamed him Whitney Son. He covered a couple of Whitney Houston songs during the competition, and he just blew the audiences away. Curious to know what happened to this young man. This is another guy we'll have to look up and see. Uh, OK, well, how did he do in the music industry? You know, Kawe uh, Pena sings We Almost Have It All. All right. Then this woman doesn't she's not necessarily a singer. She's more of a rapper. But um, this personality, Carol Conca, she is uh, she's associated with new Brazilian music of, you know, let's say this newer generation. And she became like a villain, like. I think it was two seasons ago on uh, the Brazilian reality show, uh, Big Brother Brazil. Now, Big Brother Brazil is just, it's been a big hit for like 22 or 23 seasons. And I just remember in the, was it 2021, I think, where they promoted the show as having the most black participants in, in the history of the program. <clears throat> on the global TV network. But as the show went on with his debut, you just saw all of this internal conflict going on between all of these you know, black people on the program throughout the season. And so this is Carol Conkai right here. And this is an article I did <laughs> that was talking about just the attitude of these two black women on the program. And the, the article says, unsubmissive black women are a terror of Brazil. Here's another one says the angry black woman, the effects of internalized racism, misplaced militancy, black females beefing. Reality show displays the complexity of blackness. Um, Carol Conca, this is her again. She was a beloved rapper and really a representative of what we call like the new black woman in Brazil. People, women who were pursuing their dreams, going after college degrees, uh, masters, PhDs, and you know, moving up the corporate ladder. And Carol Conca and her image, what she talked about in her music, people much, very much look to her as a role model, as, an, you know, as influence, like speaking for this new image of Black women that they were trying to create. But then after her appearance on Big Brother Brazil, people, she was one of the first people they voted off the show because she was so nasty with one of the characters on the show. Um, she went from being adored to hated. Popular rapper becomes the scorn of Brazil after arrogant behavior, abuse of colleagues on a top rated reality show. So Carol Conca, right? So she disappeared after getting voted off of that show. She disappeared for a little while only to reemerge with a new look. So then people, when she reemerged and started, I guess, trying to, you know, uh, change her image after the, the disaster of her uh, participation in Big Brother Brazil 21, people saw her publicly and they were just like, OK, it's, you know, Carol Conca has got a new look. And for a lot of people in the press, it seemed like her um, her influence was uh, the Whitney Houston look of her second album. If you remember, what was that like 1987, her second album came out. So then you have it here in what, May 6th of 2021, and people are talking about Carol Conca's new look, you know, and people were just believing that was her look inspired by the Whitney Houston look of the uh, I want to dance with somebody era. <laughs> I mean, you can kind of see what, you know, I don't know. It's not that she looks like Whitney, but you can kind of see that she maybe she did model at least the, the look of her hair 
after Whitney's look in 1987. What do you think? 